So now we can use some of our counting principles, in particular the pigeonhole principle, uh, and some of the theory we've developed from graphs to perform a magic trick, a very important application. Uh, and here's how the trick goes. Um, we're going to work with an ordinary deck of 52 cards um, with uh, 13 ranks and 4 suits. Uh, we actually have a large set of magician cards that are visible to an audience that, you know, so you can hold them up and everybody can see in a large room. And what happens first is that the audience um, chooses five of the cards. The way this happens is that the there's a magician and an assistant. The assistant goes around the audience and holds out the deck and picks random people to pull cards out of the deck. And in this way, a five card hand is assembled. Um, the assistant then reveals four of the cards to the magician. The uh, class is shown the entire set of five cards and the magician doesn't see the fifth card. The assistant just shows the four cards to the magician. And then the magician meditates and reads the mind of the assistant, he claims, uh, and announces what the fifth card is. Let's look at an example. Um, the audience might pick the following hand, a jack of clubs, ten of clubs, jack of diamonds, nine of hearts, three of diamonds. Um, and then what the uh, with the audience having picked that hand, random hand of five cards, what the assistant is going to do is show the magician the, the four cards, ten of clubs, jack of diamonds, nine of hearts, three of diamonds. And then the magician is going to meditate and say that the hidden card is a jack of clubs and everyone is going to be very impressed with how this is done. Well, maybe they will. Now, real magicians cheat. Uh, they will have various kinds of protocols of uh, the kind of body language they use and the gestures they use. Uh, and so that even if the assistant never talks and the magician does all the talking, it's still possible for the assistant to communicate all sorts of stuff about what the last card is. And that's, again, what magicians really do. The, the magic is a culture that's just very adept at taking advantage of, of people's implicit and unaware assumptions and cognitive limitations. Uh, in order to fool them. But let's assuming, assume that there's no cheating going on. This is uh, exactly as described, all that happens. The audience, picks a, the audience picks a random five card hand that the assistant and magician have no control over. The assistant shows the magician four cards and there's no side channel communication. And purely from observing the four cards, the magician can figure out what the fifth card is. How can this possibly work? Well, if you think about it a little bit, uh, what the assistant can do is uh, decide on the order in which to reveal the four cards, because the, uh, the assistant will be uh, showing them one after another, lining them, up on a, uh, lining them up on a board or holding them up in the air in their hand. But there's going to be a first card, second card, third card, fourth card. And the assistant then has four factorial possible orderings of the four cards. Let's say they're ordered by uh, their size. We can associate some arbitrary uh, orderly way to, to rank the cards uh, from 1 to 52. And uh, then there'll be a, a, a large and next to the largest, uh, a, a next to the smallest and the smallest card, and you can permute those in 24 different ways. Well, that gets you halfway there, but when the magician has seen four cards, the fifth card could be any one of the remaining 48. And although the assistant can communicate 24 possibilities, the assistant can't communicate 48, not obviously. Uh, there's one bit missing. So what this means is that the uh, assistant has communicated enough information that the magician could pin down the hidden card to be one of two, but doesn't have enough information to know which of the two it might be, because he's missing a bit. Um, where does the bit come from? Um, well, uh, the assistant, in addition to listing the order of the four cards that uh, the assistant chose to reveal, the assistant has, a, has the ability to choose which four of the five cards to list. Now, it's not obvious how to use that, but that gives the assistant the additional power to communicate that extra bit. And um, here's the way that we can understand what's going on um, in terms of a matching problem. 
So let's suppose that we have five card hands and we can think of these as a set of five cards as chosen by the audience. And what our job then is to have a recipe so that the assistant can look at a five card hand and pick out a sequence of four cards from the hand. Um, so this five card hand can be associated with the jack 10, jack, 9, leaving out the 3 of diamonds. So this is a possible set of four cards from this five card hand and then order in which they can be listed. Um, and uh, uh, likewise, uh, 10, jack, 9, uh, jack of diamonds, jack of clubs is another possible sequence of four cards that could be selected from this hand. Now, some four card sequences are not allowed. You can't, um, uh, there's no way to reveal a sequence of four cards where some of the cards aren't in the hand. So we have a constraint that, of course, the assistant is choosing four of the five cards in the hand and making them a list. So what we're going to arrive at really is a bipartite matching problem. On the one hand, on the left, I have these sets of five cards the five card hands, 52 choose five things on the left. And then on the right, I have uh, four card lists of the 54 cards, namely 54 times 53 times 52 times 51 um, items on the right. And what I need is a matching because what we want is that the uh, assistant is gonna pick a four card sequence that is matched to the five card hand. And so the way that we assure consistency of um, uh, never accidentally using the same four card sequence to be selected from two different hands, uh, which would be possible if they differ by only one card, uh, then uh, what we need is a perfect match. That is for every five card hand, I have to match it with a unique four card list that's compatible with it so each hand can only be connected to the four card lists that are from that hand. And if I can find a matching, then that means that indeed, if I look at a four card hand, it comes from a unique, a four card list, it comes from a unique five card hand. That is to say, this problem is solved that it, between the magician and the assistant, if in advance, they can agree on a perfect matching of five card hands to four card lists from the hand. Well, is there a matching? Well, um, there will be because what's the out degree of a five card hand? Well, um, we're gonna select any sequence of four cards from this five card hand. So there's five choices for the first card in the sequence, four for the second, three for the third, two for the fourth. So by the generalized product rule, the out degree of a given hand is 120. Each hand is connected to 120 different four card lists from the hand. What's the in degree of a hand? Well, once I have these four cards, uh, what is uh, uh, unspecified is the fifth card. That this uh, uh, four card sequence has to come from a hand with those four cards and the fifth card might be any one of the remaining 48. So the in degree of every four card list is 48. And that means that we have a degree constrained graph. There's got to be a matching. And that's why it's possible for the magician and the assistant to do this trick. There's only one problem. So they have a matching they can use, but how on earth do they remember it? Because look, there are 52 choose five possible five card hands. That's about two and a half million hands. And every one of them has to be matched to a unique four card list. How are the assistant and the magician gonna memorize a matching of two and a half million things. There has to be some additional structure that they use in order to be able to, in fact, do this in their heads. Remember, they're not writing anything down, and we will examine in the next video just how they do it, at least one way that works fine.